Welcome in to OutKick the Show. Uh, I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. It is Game of Thrones reaction time. Uh, we just saw Season 8, Episode 4. Let everybody roll in here as I grab my notes and prepare to dive into tonight's, uh, tonight's show. Uh, I've got a lot to react to, a lot of thoughts, of course, uh, pouring out. Uh, appreciate all of you. Uh, and uh, man, so many different angles to hit in, uh, in tonight's show. Uh, I'm going to go in order, but I want to start with a couple of things that, uh, that I think are, uh, are going to drive me crazy. I thought this episode was a lot better than last week's episode, first of all, uh, off the top here. I, I thought there was uh, so many different angles to go through here. So many different intriguing angles to uh, to examine. Starting right here at the end. Uh, starting right here at the end, uh, I am baffled by this question, uh, which is uh, right out there um, at the top of the list. And that question that is out there is this. Um, why in the world does Bran not use his th three-eyed raven uh, ability to scout for maybe the side that he's working with? Why, why, why? I hate to sound like Nancy Kerrigan in the middle of, uh, of her uh, Tanya uh, Harding uh, situation. But why is she not out there uh, taking advantage of this opportunity to actually search and make sure whether or not there is something that is going on here that is maybe worth paying attention to. And let me figure out here, I managed to not share on, uh, on uh, social media this show, so let me share it on Twitter. I don't know why it didn't go out. Now it has gone out so everybody can roll in. Let me let everybody roll in here. Let me see if it's working now uh, because I haven't been on, uh, on social media that much. There we go. Should be up right now. Okay, so I don't. I, so that's my primary complaint. I was just talking with my wife about this. Why is Bran not actually searching out things? Like, so he could say something like, "Hey, Euron Greyjoy is waiting for you around the corner in Dragonstone. He's there, and he is prepared to wipe you out." All right. I, I just think maybe that's an interesting thing that Bran could have been helpful in here. Uh, but let's go through several different of the major stories here, all right? Uh, obviously, we start off uh, with the uh, big celebration over the White Walkers being dead. Jorah, we got to start here with Jorah. Jorah may be worst friend zone ever. Can you think of anyone who has ever been friend zoned worse than Jorah? Such that Daenerys even calls out the fact that he's madly in love with her and that she can't like him. Uh, it's a tough break for Jorah, all right? Goes down the way he did. Uh, Gendry goes down, drops to one knee, uh, and says that he wants to marry Arya. Uh, we've got a uh, shoot down going on there. We also have uh, Jamie stepping in and taking Tormund right out of Lady Brienne's arms. And uh, we got Jamie cock blocking and uh, lots of uh, ridiculousness here. Gendry proposes to Arya. This is the attempt to kind of tie up everybody and it doesn't work out very well at all. Uh, John and Daenerys meet by the fire. He loved me and I couldn't love him back. Not the way he wanted. Not the way I love you. Is that all right? Uh, still no incest sex. Um, Sansa and Daenerys are still squaring off. So many different angles here in tonight's episode. So let's start with the betrayal uh, by Jamie of Brienne. I don't really understand what exactly he's doing here and this one didn't make logical sense to me either. He's willing to stay in Winterfell until he realizes that they're going to fight Cersei and then he decides to leave. I don't really understand it at all. Okay, that, that is nonsensical. Uh, nonsensical in general. We've got Bronn who shows back up and gets another kingdom in exchange for not killing them. Sam and Gilly. Ghost is still there. Uh, Jon Snow rides off as many Stark men have before headed south to disaster. Um, and uh, now we have Varys and Tyrion knowing about Jon's lineage. 
along with Arya and Sansa. Eight people know what exactly are Varys and uh, and uh, and and uh, and Tyrion going to do with this knowledge. We have uh, Cersei. We have the dragon being killed. We have the uh, we have the situation with uh, something to think about at the end. There, I thought she was going to kill Tyrion. Uh, I, I thought Cersei was. You have the great Cersei versus Daenerys stare down standoff, but the killing of Missenhe, even though it wasn't like that dramatic in the sense that I don't think she was that strong of a character in general, uh, but. The question that I have here is when uh, when Tyrion says you're not a monster I know this because I've seen it you've always loved your children more than yourself more than Jamie, more than anything I beg you if not for yourself then for your child your reign is over but that doesn't mean your life has to end doesn't mean your baby has to die Is Euron Greyjoy smart enough to realize that the only way Tyrion could know about Cersei being pregnant is if he had known before he left to go to the north. Meaning, we kind of got the the, uh, the 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 moment there of the baby isn't yours. Uh, you know, whose child is it? Who's your daddy, Mori Povich style? Um, because in theory, if Tyrion knows, then there's no way that the baby could be Euron Greyjoy's, right? I mean, I think that's kind of uh, that's kind of an intriguing angle. But I am bothered more than anything else by the fallacy set up by the show, right? I'm fine with a fantastical world. But in a fantastical world where the three-eyed raven exists, where Bran can get into a raven and fly around everywhere, why wouldn't you use that asset to kind of see what else is going on everywhere else. He can't necessarily see the future but he can see the present. So that is actually a really strange situation in and of itself. Um, the, the, the departure by Jamie didn't make a lot of sense. You think I'm a good man, he said. I pushed a boy out of a tower window, crippled him for life for Cersei. I strangled my cousin with my own hands just to get back to Cersei. I would have murdered every man, woman, and child in River Run for Cersei. She's hateful and so am I. Um, but again, that doesn't make logical sense to me. I can't exactly figure out what's going on here. My theory is, and I've heard this from other people too, and I think it makes a lot of sense. I think that what is going to happen is that Jamie is going to die trying to kill Cersei and maybe at the hand of Euron Greyjoy and then uh, as Cersei is trying to come to grips with what happened with Jaime Arya is going to show up put on the mask of Jaime who will have been dead at that point and kill uh, Cersei. That's what I think is going to happen at the end. Arya is going to get Cersei too. Green eyes go with Cersei. Uh, brown eyes, green eyes, uh, and blue eyes. And so I think that's where we're going to end up. There was a lot of activity going on here. There was a lot of battle for the Iron Throne. But again, the big debate between Daenerys and Jon Snow I don't even think is that much of a debate. It seems clear that everybody wants Jon Snow with a functional uh, brain right now. Right? Uh, Daenerys is slowly descending into the Mad Queen which is uh, why I think maybe at the end John is going to have to kill her in order to ascend to the Iron Throne or maybe Tyrion is. Somebody is going to have to kill Daenerys I think is the direction we're headed. I thought instead of killing Missenhe there and chopping her head off the, the, the mountain chopping off the head there I thought it would have been more powerful if Cersei had killed uh, Tyrion. And also more unexpected because in general we're now down to the final two episodes and the only characters we've lost have been people that really don't matter. We lost the dragon and we lost Missing He today. Uh, but I think that there is uh, that there would have been a better ending of this episode if instead of chopping Missing He's head off if Cersei had also killed Tyrion just opened up all of the fire on her. I think that would uh, that would have made a lot of sense. I'm not convinced honestly that Daenerys is going to be much better 
than uh, than than Cersei has been, and so uh, so I'm intrigued uh, by the whole way this is shaken out, um, and, uh, and and I also think that uh, that Cersei. Uh, maybe instead of the chopped head which maybe they're trying to evoke what happened with Ned Stark and for it to be shocking but it was coming down the line you could all see it. Uh, all right, what other uh, questions are there out there? What other additional questions are there out there? Again, Jon Snow's secret is out there. The idea that he has a better claim on the throne is pretty self-apparent. Um, I do think I do think this in the final segment I just saw somebody say it in the comments that I was watching with my wife I said hey I think what's likely to happen is they're obviously finally going to give the dragon armor to be able to withstand all of those uh, fired uh, spears from the dragon killing episode uh, weapon clearly the response is we got to cover this uh, dragon in armor battle armor so that he's almost like battle cat back in the day uh, in He-Man you got to go with the battle armor to cover the dragon so that the uh, the weapon is not as effective on him and so that all those spears just bounce off his steel. So I, I think that is uh, I think that's the play. We're going full battle cat here and battle cat will be the uh, will be the play in general. It's clear Sansa wants Jon Snow to be the uh, to be the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. And honestly, I don't know how you fight with Sansa right now. I think that's the better claim. I think there's no doubt at all. The Hound is going back. Where's the Hound going? The Hound's going back to uh, back to go kill the Mountain. There will be a battle between the Hound and the Mountain, his brother, and uh, and I, I feel pretty good about the Hound winning that battle. The Hound and Arya are both headed to King's Landing as well. Um, so, uh, so I, I think that there is a uh, there's a good chance of all that going on. Uh, the Clegane, Clegane Bowl, yeah, that's the Clegane Bowl. Uh, all right, I don't think Sansa and Tyrion's not a bad call. Sansa and Tyrion ruling the Iron Kingdom together is not a bad call. Uh, Gendry also becomes the uh, Lord uh, of the Manor. That's a little bit of an intriguing storyline. Uh, the Bran, I agree with you, the Bran storyline has no payoff right now. The Night King is dead. We didn't get any payoff on how Arya managed to make that happen. Uh, Arya saying she doesn't plan on coming back north probably means that, uh, that she may think she's going to die down, uh, down in the south or that she's planning on serving as, uh, as one of the rulers uh, of the, uh, like I could see Arya serving as the head of the, uh, the, the knights uh, like, like Jamie used to do the head of the night service that protects the Iron Throne. Um, but uh, in general, in general, I think there are just a lot of logical fallacies that are falling apart here that I think many people are, uh, many people are starting to take note of. Um, and so, uh, so I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going to end up happening, but, uh, but I am intrigued to see uh, what will shake down. I did think this is the best episode of the season so far. Uh, even though there are logical fallacies that are driving me insane, I do think that there are uh, there are still interesting directions to go. Uh, all right, any additional questions uh, that are out there? I'm going to go write uh, several thousand words on this, um, and uh, I do think it was the best episode of season eight. I do think it was the best episode of season eight. Um, I, I do. Last episode let me down. I don't think this season has been great. All right. I think this season has been uh, average at best. Average at best uh, season 8 so far. But we have two, uh, two episodes left. I like tonight's episode more than I did the previous several episodes. Uh, so, uh, I love all of you. Uh, my name is Clay Travis. I'm going to go right. I'll have thousands of word for you. Um, and uh, you will be able to, uh, to read them all. They'll be up in the next hour or so. Then we'll be live tomorrow on Outkick the Coverage Hour 2 discussing this. I appreciate all of you, uh, but uh, my friends and colleagues, I, by the way, I'm just back from London, so uh, I'm going to go crank it out. I'll have a lot of theories in the column that's coming right now, um, and uh, love all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. I'll be writing now. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. See y'all. Love you. Thank you, Facebook.